Have you ever wondered why pop music made in the 80s sounds so different from pop music made today? Well, I'm going to show you why. I'm also going to show you some simple compositional tricks to make your pop music really take off the 80s way. Okay, the basics. The 80s pop music had lots of 7s and 9th chords. And uh, to really make uh, that elegant 80s pop music, you have to know the basics on how these chords work. So before I show you examples from famous songs, I'm going to show you a simple C chord and how you can expand on that to get that 7th uh, or 9th feel to the chord. I'm going to simplify a bit. And all those uh, who are deep into sheet music and theoretical stuff, you have to excuse me, but I'm going to show you it uh, the simple way, okay? So here's the C chord, the C, E, G notes. And by um, uh, just lifting the, the, the uh, rightmost finger uh, a step at a time, you can add to that C chord by doing something like this. You have a C, plus, C6, and C7. And the C7 is the Seinfeld theme. theme. And the um, progression from C, plus, 6, 7 is used in uh, one of the most famous pop ballads of the 80s, The uh, Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston. And that goes something like this. I'm going to play the inversion of the chord. An inversion means that you place your fingers in a different position, but it's still the C chord. So for instance, if I play the C with that, that's the upper G, I can also play the G uh, low instead. It's the same chord, but it sounds different. That's called an inversion. So if I play something like this. I believe the children are our future. Give them love and let them lead the way Show them all the beauty they possess inside Give them a sense of pride That song utilizes the, uh, the plus 6th and 7th uh, chord during the initial uh, chord progression. So you have the C, plus 6, 7 and if you, instead of playing that B uh, flat note, instead play the, the H, you get the C major 7th chord. C, E, G, H. And by adding another step and add the D, you get the 9th. And it's um, often uh, simplified in a way that you don't play all the, the notes, you just add the, the last three. So you have the C major ninth. If you instead of playing this, play, play the B flat chord, you get the C11, which, which is a nice um, uh, transition type of chord to get to another key or to go back uh, from the circle you started when you first started the, the first chord in the track. Like this, you go by the C11 or the B flat with a C a bass note. So you have the, the C. So that's a, a basic start to understand how the the chords are built up uh, uh, through the triads of the chord. The triads, I mean by the, the added three steps each time for the expanded uh, type of chord. And you're going to need uh, this information, this knowledge, when you try to dissect uh, the 80s hits, uh, because they uh, have lots of these type of chords in them, and you can use those tricks and uh, chord progressions in your synth pop music or pop music when you compose your tracks uh, today. So that's the, the basics.
A trick that was very often used in 80s pop music was the change of key within a chorus or as a transition from a verse to a chorus. That's something you very seldom hear today, but that was uh, very much used in the hits of the 80s. And it's something I use all the time in my own tracks, as I will demonstrate in a minute. Uh, and the track I'm going to show you that used this very effectively, it's a very simple track, it's called The Never Ending Story, the Giorgio Moroder track, uh, and the vocalist Lee Mal sung the, sung the song. And if, you, if, you, if, you, if we stay in the C uh, chord uh, territory, I'm going to show you what they use so effectively in the track, and, and pretty soon in the, in the track as well. Because the track goes something like this. Turn around, look at what you see in her face, the mirror of your dreams, make believe I'm everywhere, given in the lines, written on the pages, is the answer to our never-ending story. And what they did there was exactly what I told you. From the mirror of your dreams, make believe. So they go from from a G. The E flat, make believe I'm everywhere. Written on the pages is the answer to a never ending. And they go back to the C story. And that's a very effective way to lift the whole track because when you go from G and by the F bass you lift the whole track and that's a very very nice way of doing uh, a hit song and that uh, chord progression going from um, a, a, a major chord down through the bass register to another key with also a major chord makes everything lift up and you feel a positive vibe you don't get uh, any other way. And I have a track of my own called, um, of my own called London, uh, Miss You at Christmas. Uh, which uses approximately the same idea, and let me show you a little snippet of it, uh, that here. first um, trick and, and a way of doing things the 80s way that, that you very rarely hear these days. Another famous track from the 80s that uses the same idea, uh, albeit in a kind of a different way by going uh, up instead of down to another key, is the uh, Spandau Ballet track called True. Um, and I can demonstrate this by playing also something from the intro because True is a very, very elegant uh, composition and uses lots of minor ninths and major ninth chords and also a lot of sevens. And uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, kind of sophisticated, elegant tracks of the 80s in my view. 
and uh, it goes something like this you you know the the basic uh, uh, track uh, I'm sure but it goes something like this that's the G E minor ninth C major ninth H minor 7 so that's the intro and uh, it goes further and get, get ready for the, the verse which goes back to the G so true funny how it seems always in line but never in line for dreams and there you have it instead of going down like the uh, never ending story track did here, here we go up from the C instead so true Funny how it seems, always in time, but never in line for dreams. And back again. That's a very, very nice chord progression. But now I've come back again Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be known And they end the track again The chord F major 9th upon the uh, the um, system I showed you earlier for the C. So True is uh, one of the, the tracks that uses the same principle going from one key to another within the same verse uh, like the never-ending story. So that's the, uh, the the one trick I wanted to show you how to change key within the, um, the same uh, section of the song. If you look up the track Poison by Alice Cooper, I think that holds the, uh, hold the record for uh, uh, most key changes within a chorus. Just look it up and uh, pay attention to, uh, to the changes in chords and you'll hear it changes key uh, all the time in the same chorus. Uh, Poison by Alice Cooper. Okay, another uh, major part of 80s pop music chords is the major seventh chord. Uh, along with the minor 7th chord. And to illustrate what I mean, I'm going to show you uh, another hit song of the 80s called If You Leave Me Now by Chicago, sung by Peter Cetera. Uh, and that uh, uses lots of other tricks as well that really demonstrate uh, a way of thinking that you can really use when you make your own tracks and uh, to play something from it and uh, guide you through what's going on it goes it starts with a d uh, major seventh the d uh, d sharp is like this that's the d chord uh, you can play it like this instead uh, so by uh, if you recall the the intro of this tutorial where i showed you the plus six and seventh you can show uh, play the d uh, chord and just lower uh, the left note one half step and you get a major seventh chord and if I play another inversion it sounds something like this if you 
you leave me now, you'll take away the biggest part of me. Ooh, no, darling, please don't go. So you have the D uh, major seven. If you leave me now, you'll take away the biggest part of me. Ooh, baby, please don't go. Ooh, H minor seven, the E seven, A, D. But the overall feeling of the verse is the wonderful melancholic my major seventh chord, uh, which you can use for everything. major 7 you really get a really melancholic looking back uh, type of feel to a song so going further in the track I'm going to show you some other tricks that's uh, typical for uh, David Foster and Peter Cetera in Chicago of the time but David Foster used this all the time a love like ours a love that's hard to find and here they use many tricks at one time because that line starts with a G9. That's really a D minor chord with a G uh, root bass. So when they play the uh, G9, and they go through a G minor suddenly, and the 7 as well. And they end with a clean G, and that's a, a, a kind of genius, sophisticated songwriting that you, I dare to say, you never hear something like that today. But you can really utilize, utilize this in your own tracks, so by going through... In itself, it doesn't make much sense, but in the context of the melody and the, the melodic line that they wrote, it makes perfect sense. A love like ours, a love that's hard to find. And back to H minor 7. How could we let it slip away? And. And. Did you see what happened there? to go back to the G9 here. How could we let it slip away? And they do this by going through the H suspended 4 with the C sharp and the F um, sharp 7. Tomorrow comes, we'll both regret the things we said today. Things we said today. That's the E minor, F sharp minor, and the G minor. So go back to the D major 7. So they use a lot of cool stuff in this track. Okay, so moving on, we have yet another trick that was utilized a lot in the 80s. And that's the um, uh, way of changing chords, but not changing the bass. Um, that's somewhat used to t today as well. But uh, when using those major 7s and minor 7th chords uh, without changing the bass, you get a very special 80s feeling about a uh, lot of sections. And uh, there was one track uh, that comes to mind that was big in the 80s that utilizes this trick. Rick Astley had this uh, track, Never Gonna Give You Up. And... Um 
We're no strangers to love You know the rules and so do I A full commitment's what I'm thinking of You wouldn't get this from any other guy I just wanna tell you how I'm feeling Gotta make you understand Never gonna give you up Never gonna let you down So in the start of that track you hear those We're strangers to love Know the rules and So uh, that's a very effective way of um, driving the track along because you get a very special um, kind of drive feeling, in, in my view, to, to keeping the bass, but that the chords change. Banana Rama was another uh, group also produced by Stock Aiken Watman that uh, used a lot of those uh, moves in their tracks uh, by keeping the bass and changing the chords. So that's another cool trick for you. I have a track called uh, Those Days, uh, which has a very rapid uh, chord progression in the bridge. You might say that the bridge is uh, kind of the chorus of the track because you only hear it once. But those uh, chord changes uh, also changes key at a rapid pace. And let's uh, listen to the track once here, that part of the track, and I'll show you what I mean afterwards. So as you could hear, there were a lot of chord changes there, and uh, it goes something like this. Do you remember when I sent you mail? Invitation for the interrail? It was our wild way to live So we went on down the road Taking off not only robes It was our way to give At this point my camera just turned itself off But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope to see you again soon Don't forget to subscribe Thanks.